All right, so there's three pretty distinct stages that every single trader goes through uh, on their journey. And today I wanted to talk about what you should be focusing on during each one of those individual stages. Uh, I think that this is an issue that a lot of people face, which is uh, they might be a losing trader, a break-even trader, or a winning trader, for example, and they're focusing on completely the wrong things that they should be focusing on uh, in, that uh, in that moment in their journey, uh, right? So, for example, a a uh, winning trader might be focusing on stuff that they shouldn't be th even thinking about. Same with a losing trader, they might be focusing on stuff that they should not even be thinking about. So this video is going to act almost as a guide of uh, in each of these three stages. So a consistent loser, a uh, break-even trader, and a winning trader. Uh, these are the specific things I personally believe that you should be focusing uh, most of your efforts on. Um, and before this video uh, begins here, um, just to apply some credibility to myself, uh, the reason you should trust me and the reason I even know what I'm talking about and I'm somebody worthwhile to listen to, uh, I've been trading for a long time. I've gone through every mistake uh, in the book. Uh, I've done this for a very long time, for years now. Uh, I've made every mistake. I, used, I was a losing trader for a long time. I went from a losing trader to a consistently profitable one. I've made millions of dollars in the market. I've helped many, 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 many people at this point uh, in in the form of one-on-one -on -one sessions. I've gone through, I've looked into individuals, uh, personal journeys, and I've came to found that everybody kind of struggles uh, with the same issue. So I've gone through these issues, I've helped people through these issues, and now I will talk about these issues uh, for everybody. So uh, to begin here, as a losing trader, as a completely losing trader, these are the things that I believe that you should be focusing on, really the only things that you should be focusing on. So first and foremost, let's kind of break down what a losing uh, trader means, because I feel like um, people people don't understand how impressive it is to be a losing day trader. Uh, and, and when I mean losing, I mean consistently losing, uh, you know, month over month, week over week, day over day, you're losing money, losing more, losing more. And, and um the reality of it is that you are doing something consistent in a market that uh, is kind of toxic to consistency. In this case, you're consistently losing, which is not the outcome that you necessarily want, but it is something consistent. And there's something to be said about that. You have to be trying uh, very hard to be consistent in this market, losing or winning. In reality, if you if you sit down and think about it, you should be able to take random trades at one-to-one -one risk reward, for example, and be break even uh, all day. You should be able to do that. Um, and if you're consistently losing or consistently winning, it's equally as impressive. And by the way, this video is going to be unedited. Uh, I do have, it's not really a script, but, um, it's like talking points, talking points here. Uh, just so I kind of stay on track because I feel like I was kind of yapping a little bit last video, but it is going to be unedited. I'm not going to do editing anymore. I don't care about the YouTube algorithm anymore. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's pretty impressive to be a losing trader. It's pretty pre impressive to be a winning trader. It shouldn't be impressive to be break even. Break even should be the default state of everybody. So when you're listening to these points that I believe that you should be focusing on, they're really points that are going to be uh, in place that hopefully try to fix your baseline. So I believe uh, first and foremost, a losing trader needs to make sure that they actually have uh, some sort of real edge in the market, right? Uh, because you could be consistently losing for one of two reasons. Either your trading psychology is completely off, uh, you're not managing a risk in any correctly way, uh, you're just throwing money away, you're over trading, you're uh, over leveraging, whatever, and that could cause you to be a losing trader. Or secondly, your edge itself can be the problem. Um, and what do I mean by your edge? I mean your strategy. So your strategy your, itself could be non-profitable. It could be that uh, the thing that you're using, the way that you're looking at the charts, it's not working, or maybe you're not executing upon it correctly. Whatever it is, your edge itself could be a problem. So number one, if you're a losing trader, you need to make sure you have a real edge. And that uh, comes from uh, what's going to be the second step. And this is building up trust for your edge. So things like that 30 trade challenge that was first introduced by Dr. David Paul, and then I believe popular li uh, popular lies. I can't speak apparently by Mark Douglas, um, where you create some sort of uh, entry criteria, whatever you want to call it, for your trading, and you execute on that for the next thirty occurrences in a row with no mistakes. Okay, give yourself 
set rules for entry, set rules for exit, set things you look for, set ways you're managing risk, give yourself a daily loss limit. That's something that I do. I've talked about that in many other videos on this channel. Uh, give yourself a, a particular way to manage risk. I think I've already said that. And make sure you execute on that for 30 trades in a row with no exceptions and no rule breaks. If you break a rule, you need to restart this process. And, and the reason you're doing this is because it's going to give you trust in your edge and it's also going to show you if your edge actually works 30 positions um if you have a very uh, active edge something where you could get 30 trades in a week maybe do 100 or 200 and this is kind of why instead of 30 trades i usually tell people to, to just trade for a month or two months or whatever like this uh, because trade frequency could be different uh, per individual per individual strategy as well so uh, what this is doing is it's kind of proving to you that your edge works and it's also getting you to trust your edge you're saying hey if i execute without breaking into the rules this is going to be the outcome at the end of it all and that's the outcome that i actually want to have so uh, doing that 30 trade challenge really will uh, make you um, complete this first step of making positive that you have a real edge. And there are also things like back testing, right? You want to go back in history uh, if you want to. If you have a mechanical strategy, it's going to be a little bit easier. If you have a more discretionary system, kind of like I do, uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to back test. But uh, any way you can, make sure you have a real edge. Second up, or I guess the third one here, is uh, just focus on being able to be uh, executing like a robot. Uh, this kind of ties in with the other thing, and that 30 trade challenge will certainly help here. But uh, seriously, like uh, kind of disconnecting your emotions, disconnecting your mind, disconnecting your thoughts, and disconnecting uh, all your beliefs about money and everything from the market and executing your particular strategy and your particular edge as if you were a robot uh, with no emotions um, and no bias and no personal grudges or vendettas or anything. And this leads on to point four, uh, which I have written down as stop being an emotional bitch. Uh, <laughs> and you know, sometimes, you know, it, maybe it's a bit vulgar, but it's true. A lot of traders are kind of a bitch to themselves. And, um, I'm not here to tell you really what you want to hear. I'm more so trying to tell you what you need to hear. And a lot of times, uh, as traders, we could get so caught up in dumb shit, man. Like, oh my God, I just lost a trade. Oh, I hit my loss limit on the day, but instead of walking away, I see another opportunity. I just need to take it back because I need to make my money back. Shut the fuck up. You're being a pussy. Stop being a fucking pussy. Holy shit, bro. It's not that hard. It, it, but I know it's hard because I've been through it, okay? Um, and I, this is not to make fun of anybody, but it's really sit down with yourself and, and t like talk to yourself and be like, why am I really making these same mistakes over and over and over and over again? Um, because if you sit down and look at trading from a broader scope, it's not that hard of a thing to do. You have a rule set. If you have an edge, you have a rule set that you're meant to follow. You follow that motherfucker and eventually you'll make money and that's it. And there, there's nothing more to it. So if you're sitting there still breaking your rules, still, um, you know, worrying about losses or whatever, you need to, you need to really sit down with yourself and, um, just, just say to yourself straight, like, why am I still doing this? Why am I still doing dumb things in the moment? I know I just broke a rule or I know I shouldn't be doing this. Why am I still doing it? It's like in real life. You, you, if you went to a store and you saw a fucking box of candies and, and instead of just buying the candy like a normal person in your brain, you just couldn't get it out of your brain that you wanted to steal the fucking candy. Don't steal the candy, motherfucker. Just buy the candy, okay? Uh, I don't know if that was a good analogy at all, but basically stop being emotional. Try to get a grasp of your emotions. If you want help with that, I would really recommend uh, looking into real psychologists people like randy howell are amazing for things like this the book the mental game of trading by jared tendler is a very good book uh, that puts in uh that puts into play like real practical steps to improving your uh, trading psychology of course there's legendary books like trading in the zone but i think uh, some of the other ones do a better job at giving you a step-by-step -step, kind of how do i actually uh how do i actually positively benefit myself here um Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk about is uh, obviously risk management. You need to be utilizing correct risk management, uh, not just guessing on position sizes. You need to be ris risking a static amount or a, uh, a, a non-static amount if that's what you want to do, but you have to have some sort of regimented risk management system. And I highly recommend you going and running simulations of your risk management system against your real statistics that you should be collecting in a data-driven uh, uh, way in a spreadsheet. Um, 
and and that is also just going to go to improve your ability to trust your edge because you're going to sit there and you're going to run these simulations against your data and you're going to be like, wow, uh, over 10,000 positions, uh, the most that I've ever lost in a row is uh, nine times. So if in the future you're in the live trading environment and you lose six or seven in a row, you're not going to panic. You're not going to freak out. You're going to say, hey, I know I'm in a pretty bad drawdown right now. It looks pretty bad, but this is about the worst that I could ever get because I've ran simulations on my data. And I know that if I keep executing like normal, eventually the equity curve is going to round out and everything's going to be okay for me. Okay, and then the next thing uh, for a losing trader that I believe uh, they should really be focusing on is uh, kind of a little analogy that I like to say, uh, becoming a fisherman. Okay, so when I say become a fisherman, what I mean, and this is kind of, I guess, coined by me, this is one of the uh, things that I tell people a lot, is be a fisherman in the markets, okay? Don't go into the market looking to trade. Don't go into the market trying to force yourself upon the market and, and force your ideas in the market. Go into the market as a patient person that waits for setups to show themselves to you. And the reason that relates to a fisherman is if, imagine a fisherman went to a lake, right? He gets his reel, he throws it in, and the whole time he's staring over the fucking river pointing out every fish. He's like, there's a fish there. It's a fish there. It's a fish there. He like jumps in the fucking river and swims after them. You're not a spear fisherman. You're on the shore, buddy. You don't have a wetsuit on to go swimming. So, um, <laughs> be a fisherman in the way that you just throw your rod in the water. You sit back on your fucking beach chair. You relax. You smoke a cigar. If that's your vibe, I don't know. Maybe you go to bed and read a book. You're relaxing until you get a bite on your rod or until a setup shows itself. That's the only time that you should be caring about the market. And really, I am a firm believer that the less you care about the market, the more success the market will bring to you. So really focus on, on just throwing your line out there and waiting for the setup that is supposed to that you're supposed to find and put all these things together. And if you can put all these things together and you have a real edge, you should be able to get to the next phase in your trading career, which is becoming a break even trader, which is, uh, in my opinion, the default. If you take somebody with no information about the markets, with no anything, and you put them in front of a random chart and you tell them to execute at random, if they use good risk management, they should be able to be break even. So now you've got from being a loser to becoming break even. What do you do now? What are the things that you should be focusing on now? <sighs> Well, in this period of trading, I firmly believe that data collection becomes the most critical thing to your success as a trader. You have to be collecting data. If you don't want to collect data, stop trading, leave, go find a different career. Uh, you're going to become very acquainted with Google Sheets, uh, and that's just what it's going to be. And if you don't like it, then fucking leave. I don't care, bro. But data collection is fucking key. You need to be collecting your data. That means logging every single trade you've ever taken. Beyond logging, you need to be collecting specific metrics about your trades, like the max unrealized profit that you were in in the position, uh, things like what would have happened if I trailed my stop loss versus if I just went for a take profit? What would have happened if I went break even versus didn't go break even? What would have happened if I did this in this scenario, blah, blah, blah. And you want to collect all these different metrics about every single trade you take so that you could get into the optimization loop. And the optimization loop is something very special. The optimization loop is where you're going to find your real profitability in the markets. And the way that I would go about the optimization loop is you collect every single possible statistic you could think of about each trade that you take. And uh, you do 30 at a time. So you collect 30 trades of data at a time. Or again, if, you're, if you're, uh, your system is more frequent in execution, uh, collect a month's worth of trade at a time. Collect two months uh, worth of trading at a time. Whatever you want to do. And um, basically, at the end of it all, you're going to have all these metrics that you just collected. Like, for example, I'll utilize, uh, let's say you were using take profits. Now you want to see if you want to use trailing stop losses. You collected information about your trailing stop losses. So now you go back and you back test variable changes. So you cha you pick one or two things that you believe that you did wrong or you believe you could have done better, not that you did it wrong, uh, to your edge. And you change those uh, in, in kind of a backwards way to all the data that you already collected. So if you have 30 trades of data you, and you go back and you say, 
how would have my results differed if I would have trailed my stop on every single one of these? How would have my results differed if I would have added an extra confirmation to the type of entry that I was trying to get on all of these trades? Uh, and this will kind of let you know uh, this is going to be the next iteration of your system that you should be using. And then you take that and you trade one particular way for a good amount of time, at least 30 trades, as I say, and you do that data uh, kind of optimization loop again, where now you go in a backwards way, uh, go through all your trades again, apply the changes to those positions, uh, see how your results would have differed, change it again, change it again, change it again. And eventually, eventually, you're going to get to a point where you're just automatically profitable because you have optimized yourself to a point where you got to break even. If you think about it, if you're break even, it doesn't take that much to turn your equity curve up. It really doesn't. If you're break even, you're in an amazing place because if you're break even, uh, one small change could take you from break even to profitable. Uh, excuse me. One small change could take you from break even to profitable. So this uh, this optimization loop is key, and this opt and this optimization loop should continue uh, into you being a profitable trader. Even after you're profitable, you should continue this optimization loop. Uh, once you are making money in, in in trading, you might not need to collect data as much. Uh, I don't log my trades at all anymore. Um, but we'll talk about that, that in a moment. So, uh, the next thing is just finding a, a solid balance between risk to reward on a, any particular, uh, like average risk reward and also win rate. Okay. So you need to be able to, when you are optimizing, the thing that you should be optimizing towards is a favorable risk reward for whatever system you have. So let's say your system gets you, um, like an average winner of like 10 R and your win rate should be X amount. So like you, you need to, you need to optimize your win rate to your average risk reward. So the average risk reward of your system, your win rate needs to be able to match that to a point where it's profitable. And that's what you need to be optimizing for. Uh, and then just removing overall dumbness when you're a break even trader. So things like, um, stupid mistakes, like uh, maybe you click long instead of short. Don't do that. Stop being fucking an idiot, man. Double check shit. Oh, maybe you left an order on overnight and you went to bed. Don't do that dumb shit, bro. Stop doing that shit. Uh, maybe, uh, you took a trade outside of your edge for no reason. Stop being fucking stupid. Stop doing that shit. So just getting rid of dumbness in general is also the uh, one of the things that you really need to focus on during this break-even stage as a trader. And then, if you do that, you follow the optimization loop over and over and over again, you've come from being a loser to a break-even trader to now, hopefully, your equity curve is slightly sloping upwards. And once you're here at this point... You've pretty much beaten the game. Uh, and the reason I say that is because money in trading is not made by having a better win rate or a better average risk reward. Money in trading is made by using more money. So I don't care if you're making 2% a month. It doesn't matter. Guess what? If you use a million dollar account, that's 20 bands a month. That's not bad. That's not too shabby. And, and, and realistically, with prop firms and all of this shit, uh, you could get a lot of capital very quick in this industry if you seriously are profitable. So um, really, you beat the game at this point. If you're a winning trader, you beat the game. But there's some things that you could do and, and some things that I want to warn you with. So losing your edge is just as easy as finding it. Okay, so a lot of times what people do when they become a winning trader is they'll get to a point where they're finally making some money in the market and out of impulse, they'll start changing up their system again. This is exactly the opposite of what you should be doing. If you find something that's working, if you find a winning strategy, a winning system in these markets, the first thing that you need to do is you need to be able to sit down and say, um, I'm no longer accepting changes to my system. And if I do make changes to my system, it's going to be absolute like astronomically hard to bring in new things into my trading like for me if i want to add something to my trading or if i want to change something in the way that i trade it takes me months of consideration to to even it, like months of not using and just considering it to even potentially uh, start to bring that in when i added trailing stops to my trading that was a multi-month integration process when i added att to my trading my most recent idea that was over a month of utilizing it in the background, just watching it, but not using it uh, before I ever integrated it into my method. And the reason is because if you integrate the wrong thing, you can fuck up your edge in some way that you didn't even realize. So it's very important um, that you don't add something too soon. And at this point in your trading, you should be focusing on um, 
you know, starting to withdraw money, starting to get consistent, maybe uh, try to figure out how to get trader tax status if that's what you want. Uh, start to scale a personal account up and, and pay yourself money from trading. Seriously, pay yourself. If you're not paying yourself, it's not going to feel real. You need to pay yourself. Um, that's so important. I feel like a lot of people get profitable and they just never pay themselves. Pay yourself, motherfucker. You worked for this, withdraw the damn money, put it in your fucking bank account, go buy some shit with it, pay a bill with it, whatever. Make it real to yourself. Become consistent. Focus on your discipline. Focus on everything we talked about at this stage. But really, the main takeaway when you're a winning trader is just be very careful with adding new things to your trading. So uh, these were the three stages that every single trader goes through. And that's kind of how I would navigate through them as a day trader. Um, hopefully, this helps somebody. If you want to learn uh, more about what I do or if you want to learn my system and my strategy, you could join the Discord down in the description. Uh, there's also a Patreon there. I don't care if you don't join the Patreon, but you still might want to join the Discord because I do do uh, pretty frequent giveaways uh, in the Discord. Just if you're in there, it's free to join the giveaways. It's not free to see all the content, uh, but it is free to join the giveaways. So if that's something you want to do, you could join up. But yeah, this is pretty much uh, like my roadmap for how I would navigate through these three stages and uh, hopefully it helps somebody.